Was? Start shooting now. In March of 2015, I was able to train with James Story at Range 6. James is a former Marine, a prepper, and an amazing fire instructor. I'd like to share some of the lessons I learned during my time training with a professional that has had two-way range experience. Whether you are a hunter, by the way, hog hunting from a helicopter is one of the coolest things I've ever done. Whether you are someone with no former military or law enforcement experience, or just enjoy basic shooting. You should not only learn basic firearm safety, but become proficient with your firearms. My hope is that with this video, you can see that everyday people, like myself, can learn how to become proficient with firearms. During a grid down scenario, it's very important to have a way to defend yourself. In the event your area's infrastructure has been damaged, first responders will be tied up and may not be able to respond, even if you're lucky enough to be able to reach them. There are many forms of self-defense that do not involve firearms, like martial arts, but in this video, we'll specifically be discussing firearms. First things first, safety is critical. Before you truly become proficient with firearms, you need to master the foundations. Nothing is more dangerous than being around someone that is not safe with a firearm. Before we jump into the values of being proficient with your firearms, I can't stress enough the importance of knowing and being solid in the four laws of gun safety, which is what we focused on at great length when I did the training. The four gun laws are, law number one, the gun is always loaded. Law number two, never point the gun at something you are not prepared to destroy. Law number three, always be sure of your target, what is in front of it and what is behind it. Law number four, Keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are on the target. Well, I ran through those quickly. These are the four laws I will always rehearse when I go to the range with others before we even touch firearms. The basics keep everyone safe and alive. So now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about how you can become proficient with firearms. The most important thing you can do to become proficient with firearms is to learn from someone that knows firearms and can teach you. And even more importantly, you must be teachable. Here are some of the lessons I learned after training with a professional. A professional can teach you the mechanics of shooting and manipulating your firearms. A professional can diagnose the mistakes you're making. A professional can help prevent you from learning bad habits that you have to unlearn later. A professional can help you see things you're not even seeing, namely safety issues that may cause you or someone else injury later. A professional can help you gain confidence as you progress in your learning. Here are some of the principles I learned from getting trained. Accuracy is more important than speed. Speed is economy of motion. Learning to reduce steps and manipulate your firearm is important. For example, I have what's called a bad lever on my AR-15 to remove the additional step of having to slap the bolt catch release each time I load a new magazine into my rifle. Every step counts, and when you're under stress, your fine motor skills go to crap and removing unneeded steps makes a big difference. Another principle I learned is focus on form first. Speed will come with practice if you're practicing to be fast. One of the other things I learned when getting trained is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Focus on form. Once you can accurately draw your pistol and hit a target at 25 yards in three seconds, work on reducing that speed down to 2.5 seconds. You can buy a shot timer, I'll put a link in the description below or you can get an app to put on your phone to record run, your shooting run, run, run. times. Remember, if you can't do it slow, you can't do it fast. One of the other things I learned is right. how to zero a rifle. To the left. I should probably click over a couple, huh? <laughs> Another principle I learned is understanding how to reload your weapon quickly. Come on, man. Another principle I learned on, is man. understanding how to transition in between your rifle now. and pistol. Let's go. You may be firing your rifle to have a jam or run out of ammunition and having a backup or a secondary weapon. One of the things I also learned that I really have been able to use a lot since the time of training is handling gun failures. Hold on. Things happen all the time when you pull the trigger. You may get a double feed when you load your magazine into your firearm. 
you may have a failure to fire. This is where the technique of tap, rack, and bang comes in handy. I'm not sure if you've ever seen the show on the National Geographic channel called Doomsday Preppers. Uh, it's worth watching if for no other reason they get a good laugh. But from time to time, you see some things that are really interesting on the show. There's one episode in particular where a group of preppers uh, are put to a basic test, and one of them ends up with a gun that jams on him, and he doesn't know how to resolve the issue. And they're in this situation where they're being, you know, a mock simulation of being attacked. After watching that episode, it impressed upon me how critical it is to understand how to handle jams and other problems that can come up under stress when you're actually using your firearm. Some of the other useful things that I learned were moving and shooting and close shooting. There we go. Coming around corners and shooting. Using cover to fire from and learning how to expose a minimum amount of your body when using cover. Another important lesson I learned is after firing, you always need to look around you. While these are not by any means exhaustive of all the things we focused on, these are some of the highlights that I still practice to this day when I go to the range. And just to be clear, training makes you proficient with your firearm. It doesn't make you some amazing tactical shooter. I took the course simply to become proficient with firearms. I realize I'm very confident in handling the situation that may come up when using my firearms. And if I were forced into a situation where I had to fend and protect my family, I'm confident that I could do it. I realized that even when I went through this training, I still must focus on the fundamentals every time I go to the range or handle my firearms. The moment you become complacent when handling firearms is a moment you'll have a negligent discharge. Having run through these things that I personally learned while taking professional training, how can you find a firearms instructor in your area that will help you learn to master your firearm? Google is your friend. In my area, I can simply go and type in the name of the area that I live in and usually add the word tactical training. I've been able to find a lot of different companies that have a lot of hybrid views that train law enforcement, and they also train the civilian population, and these guys are very qualified. While they're not cheap most of the time, especially the good ones, this is a skill set that I think, again, if you're going to really focus on firearms, you really need to take the time to learn and to train and to become proficient under the eyes and guidance of a professional. When I help teach others what I've learned and take them to the range, here's some of the basic gear I recommend that they have that makes applying the lessons I learned uh, so much easier. Number one is having a reliable belt. You can find or pick up a good belt on Amazon, something that's really stiff that's going to be able to support a holster that you can draw from and that won't sag. Uh, getting a good holster like a Kydex holster, uh, getting magazine pouches that you can put different magazines um, on your belt. A shot timer, I mentioned that earlier in the video. Uh, again, you can get apps for this for your particular phone, and these really help teach you how to uh, become faster and faster and faster as you master the skills. Another thing that's really important on your firearm is a good solid gun optic. I personally prefer red dots. Everybody's got their own taste. Uh, there's companies like Aimpoint. I personally have an EOTech 512 on the top of my AR-15. Uh, I just helped a friend zero in. He has a Bushnell red dot. And I'll provide the links to both of these below. They're both amazing red dot options. The Bushnell is significantly cheaper. It's not mil spec, but for someone that's getting into firearms, it's definitely a good solution. Another must have is a rifle sling, especially if you're going to learn how to do transitions, primary firearm to your secondary. Another good investment is having a pair of gloves. You can use something as simple as mechanics gloves. Again, you can pick these up for relatively cheap on Amazon and I'll provide links in the description below. And the final one is ear protection. Uh, the one I use, it has a microphone built in, and so it allows me to both be able to talk to individuals in between firing, and whenever I fire, it cuts the sound off. So it's a really good option. So while getting trained by a professional is not always cheap, it's one of the best investments I've made uh, to learn a skill I honestly hope I never have to use. But if you can't get professionally trained and you just don't have the finances for it, it's understandable. A great training resource that I always point people to if they're on a limited budget is the Magpul Dynamics series. The training I took through Rain 6 covered many of the things uh, discussed in the Magpul Dynamics course. You can look this up and again I'll provide uh, links below. There's the Art of the Carbine 1 and 2, there's the Art of the uh, Pistol I believe it's called, 
these courses parallel very closely to the training I took. Um, I go back and watch them from time to time just to kind of revisit a lot of these principles. Really good material. One last thing I want to say about firearms has to deal with the issue of gun safety and securing your firearm. We talked about safety earlier, but securing your firearm is something that is extremely important. For my pistol, I use an easy to access mini vault, which I can get into in probably under two seconds. Uh, for my rifles, I use the uh, Barska quick access biometric rifle safe. You can simply uh, program in your different fingerprints, hit a button, stick one of your fingers on it, and it'll open the vault right up. Same thing, I can get in literally under two seconds. One of the final things I'll say, is you probably should, if you enjoy getting into firearms and you feel like this is a very important thing that you want to learn to build into your preps, I would encourage you to support the NRA. The NRA is probably one of the last groups that I know of. I know there's a lot of different gun groups in America, but when they're, when they're one of the largest, it's really out there protecting the rights of firearm owners in the United States. For about 35 a year, you can help ensure you maintain the freedoms you enjoy with your firearms. So it's something I think is a wise investment if you want to continue to maintain firearms as far as your preps. Again, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. My hope is that it can give you a quick overview of how easily someone like myself that has no military or law enforcement background through proper training can learn to understand and respect firearms, how to control them, how to proficiently use them. And I think it's a good skill to have in your preps, understanding how to use firearms and understanding self-defense. As always, if you find these videos helpful, please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video, and I always, always enjoy having comments and feedback from the community. And uh, please feel free to drop a line. I'd love to hear from you. As always, be safe out there.